Hello friends and strangers, welcome to the first devlog. We will be setting up the character creation menu and the first level, so let's begin. I started by creating the playable character. I did a few sketches and I know I'm awful at drawing, but I was simply attempting to put my thoughts into a piece of paper. What I had in mind was a smaller version of a kangaroo, without any arms or a mouth. Why no arms, you might ask? To make it less humanoid. Why no mouth? I thought animating its eyes and ears will be enough to show its emotions, so... Yep. This is by no means the final model, it's just the first iteration, and to be honest I was quite happy how it was coming along. I gave it all the basic animations, idle, run, and jump. Then I proceeded to work on the character editor. I wanted to give players some options to customize their little creatures, so first I added male and female options. Every time you press 1, a random skin color will be picked for you, then I decided screw that, they will all be hermaphrodites. So I created two logos for each perking and proking and swapped them for the gender logos. I made it so that each tribe has a specific color palette for skin and elemental colors. This will be chosen at random for you when you pick a tribe. The environment looked a little bit dull, so I added two different planes containing a particle system each, one of snow and the other of embers. I also changed the fog color at runtime. Then I said, screw randomizing colors. I am creating an editor window that will allow players to choose elemental and skin colors. After a while of coding in buttons for colors and moving UIs back and forth, this is what I came up with. First, you choose a tribe, and the editor pops up. You can see the name of the tribe as well as its logo and a quick description, then the skin and the elemental options. I also added the option to choose the difficulty here. Down below you have three icons, two to rotate and the middle one to shut the light off and see the elemental color better. Also on the far right you can change the tribe by selecting that big ass logo. <laughs> now for gameplay stuff, I began coding in basic movement using Unity's physics. After a while I had something working nicely. Now I had to add the camera rotation and that was pretty easy. I continued by creating a health script that will flash the player whenever it loses health. It will also push him away, kind of like in Super Mario 64. I also added the player model. I still needed to do the animations, import the animations, but I just wanted to have something there, you know. Now I had to find a way to save the colors and the difficulty you chose at the start of the game. I use player prefabs for now, I understand this is not the way to go about saving, it's pretty sketchy I know, but I will serialize information later on. I set up the animator controller and played around with the transitions a little bit to get something smooth and fast. I also imported this asset called Dynamic Bond, I have had this asset for a long time and I highly recommend it. It helps you bring to life unanimated objects, I added Dynamic Bonds to the player tail and ear, hairs, strings, I don't know. This is what it looks like now, jumping and moving has no delay, it is all instant, I made sure of this, I really wanted a highly responsive controller. I love how the tail moves around, it's so graceful. Now I had to make another controller, this was for the first level when you are rolling down the mountain inside your little cocoon. For this, I just needed to make a ball rolling down the mountain, you know, very easy stuff. And yep, it happened. Yes, folks, I upgraded my project to the Universal Render Pipeline. This will allow me to play around with the shader graph and other cool features. I know it's still in beta, but anyways, my little cocoon looked like shit. So I gave it a little particle effect, I also got these three different skyboxes to play around with, and it was time to start creating the terrain for the first level. I had to make it all angles so that the cocoon would just roll down it. After a couple of hours playing around with it, I used some assets I had laying around my computer, some stylized rocks, 
grass textures, I'm calling it space grass, uh, some mushrooms. This is what the level looks like right now. This is where you jump off into the world's atmosphere. I'm thinking about adding some clouds and red or light blue lights here and there, depending on which side you chose. Now I wanted to add a dead function for your cocoon. So basically when you collide with something, if the hit force is higher than a certain amount, we enable a dead particle I created. We also unparent it from the player and destroy the player game object. Also, on our camera script, we lower the field of view over time as well as show a white image over the screen. Once the white image is covering the whole screen, we reload the level. I added the first mechanic I am calling anti-gravity. When you press space and you're falling down, you will lose all gravity pulled towards the planet, allowing you to smoothly land. If you don't use this properly, you will die. You can see the anti-gravity you have down here. I am using Unity Slider for this. Here's what the first level plays like now. Oh yeah, and also made the cocoon look more like an egg for some reason, I don't know. That is it for the first devlog entry. Next devlog we will work more on the level, we're going to add the plant from where the player falls from and some more eye candy and gameplay features. I'm thinking about creating something like a water eruption or steam eruption that will launch your cocoon up in the sky forcing you to make a landing using the anti-gravity ability and maybe some sort of enemy that tries to eat you. But um, yeah. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next step. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.